Um, thanks everybody who made it to the Secret Society of Twin Cities Startup Week. And I'm hoping that all of you want to become more involved this year. Um, I'm Casey Schultz. I'm the director of Twin City Startup Week. I recently moved here from the San Francisco Bay Area where my background is managing startup accelerators in Silicon Valley as well as startups in San Francisco. Um, and I was actually lured here through the fly-in program last year, which we'll talk a little bit about today. Um, alrighty, and my name is Reed. Uh, I've been with uh, Beta and Startup Week since the beginning. So um, when it was just 14 events, uh, back in 2014, uh, all the way through now, and uh, it's been pretty remarkable to watch the growth and to see everybody um, joining, and we're uh, excited to have uh, and invite new people in. Uh, all right, so who has been to a Startup Week event? Okay, about half. Um, all right, so the, we'll get into kind of like what actually happens there, but before we do, like, let me tell you the backstory of why Startup Week came into being. And um, at the time, this was uh, 2014, um, Beta had just done its first showcase earlier that year. Um, we had a few kind of key players that existed in uh, the tech community and in support of the tech community. Um, Ministar, the organization that's uh, hosting us here today, was one of them. Um, then we had Beta, we had the Minnesota Cup, Tech.MN, um, and that was pretty much it. Uh, there, there were a few other kind of vertically focused things, um, but really not much of a uh, concerted uh, strategic effort of like, what can we do to make, uh, make this bigger? and make this more exciting. So we got together, um, that original kind of cast of partners, and we said, well, what if we, what if we put all of our events, uh, our mini bar, our showcase, the Minnesota Cup, what if we did it all in the same week? Uh, would, would it, would, if we were to do that, uh, create something that's bigger than any one of our own individual brands? So that was the, the reason that we did the first uh, week and uh, it was super exciting. I think I mentioned we had 17 events. Um, fast forwarding five years um, to kind of more recent uh, numbers, you can see the growth has, has changed quite dramatically. So um, 17 events in the first year, uh, last year over 200. Um, we purposefully don't put this in the convention center because we want as a part of the nature of the week to showcase all of the amazing things that exist in the Twin Cities. So we move it all around. 114 venues last year, attendees, registered attendees uh, uh, from a total of all the conferences taking place that week of 17,000. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of people that are participating in it. Um, uh, bigger kind of ch more recent changes have, have been uh, the continued addition of new content and new partners, um, a lot of corporate involvement uh, has has started kind of picking up and hosting their own events or cross cross combining with with events focused on startups. Uh, we've had a lot of interest from the philanthropic communities, uh, from all of the various kind of uh, tech communities that focusing that focus on supporting um, specific technologists. Uh, and, and technologist groups. Um, so kind of taking a, a, a look even further um, of what happened last year, um, you can see some of the kind of key statistics that, that we're tracking. So on the media side, um, you know, number of impressions, uh, number of investors that, that we know uh, were participating in the week, uh, number of companies and unique companies participating. Um, we talked about events and attendees. We're always looking for driving up the first time uh, attendees and, and really trying to, to attract more and more people from out of state. So we've got a program that's specifically designed for that called the Flying Program, um, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. But really the, the grand vision in all of this is uh, we've got some things that we're really, really good at here in the Twin Cities 
and we have a community of, of technology that uh, is really growing. Um, so the week is an opportunity to kind of put all of that on display um, and show people who are not aware of that locally that this stuff exists and then uh, attract people from out of town uh, to come and check it out as well. So, you know, when we think about the future of the week and where this is all heading, the comparables that, that, we, that, we, that we are shooting for is something like a South by Southwest uh, collision conference, uh, whatever kind of national, international focused uh, event is, is kind of how we're building this uh, goal. And how we get there is uh, through amazing partnerships. So we've had, uh, this is our look at uh, a lot of the different organizations that uh, supported it last year. Um, if you were to look over it over five years, the, the, the page would be uh, five times bigger. There's a lot of people that get involved. Um, and uh, your involvement can, can be through a number of different ways. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, but just know that uh, we're always looking for good content. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for sponsors. Um, and the collectively, that's how all of this comes together. Thanks, Reed. So who, again, has attended Startup Week? OK, awesome. Quite a few of you. That's great to hear. Um, most people, when they think of Startup Week, they're like, oh, you have to be a startup, or you have to be an entrepreneur. And the amazing thing about Twin City Startup Week, as you saw from the vast number of corporate partners that we work with, we actually attract a very diverse crowd to our week. We have entrepreneurs. We have um, startup enthusiasts. We have business leaders. We have corporate partners and students, the media and investors, to just to name a few. Now, our Startup Week is very unique, and this is actually the case for most Startup Weeks around the country. We, as Twin City Startup Week, the organizing, the organization, don't plan that many events. It's purely a community-driven week, where people come up with something that they find interesting, that they think adds value to the community, and they actually plan that event, find the venue, and we are the keepers of the calendar, of promoting the events, and putting on some of our uh, headline events. So we're the ones who are putting on the opening party, the closing party, and then we have um, start boards that happen during the week. So for the people who have attended Startup Week, what was your favorite event that you went to? Does anybody want to share? Is that the beta event of that? Uh, the showcase? The showcase. Great. Yeah, that was at Target, I think, yes, I yes, at the Target Plaza Commons. So for those of you who aren't aware, um, Beta, we're the nonprofit that we have our own startup uh, accelerator, and then we also put on Startup Week. And one of our events is that we have all these startups come and present their companies. And it's like this big, joyous uh, event where you can walk around and meet the startups. So thank you. That's our showcase. Good shout out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't pay him to say that. The, does anybody else have an event that they really liked from past Startup Weeks? What was that? The tech stars event at First Ave, just because seeing startups get the rock star treatment is kind of cool. Yeah. All yes. These, all these young startup people getting on stage. You know? mm -hmm. Did you go to the Farm to Fork one? I did not. No. That was, that was the best. That was the best lineup of startups, kind of front to back, that 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 I've seen from any tech stars demo day. It was rock solid. Was that one of the night events? Yeah. Yeah. So, there's so much going on in that week that you can't hit everything. It's great. Mm -hmm. There is a lot, a lot of quality programming. So Techstars is back with a demo day this year, um, which will be on October 14th, 15th, Tuesday the 15th. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully you can make it. Yes? I was just wondering, uh, is that different than many demos? Yes, there are many demo days happening throughout the week. So Mini Demo has their demo day, Techstars has their demo day, Beta has our demo, well, kind of demo day. Um, so and those and are Cup great. Too, right? I'm sorry, what? M and Cup was also there. Right? Minnesota Cup happens every year, yes. Um, so those are great examples of some of the events. So we have a lot of demo days that happen during the week. We also have a ton of workshops, panels, um, uh, what else do we have? Happy, Happy hours. hours, networking, fireside chats, and then quite a few of the um, like uh, 
sports organizations or not sports, but like gyms actually have like free workout sessions that you can also attend. So it's like this wide variety of entertainment that happens during the festival. Um, and if you've attended Startup Week in the past, you probably have been aware that it is, has been spread out across two major metropolitan areas. So for some people who want to go to several events, that can mean a lot of driving. So some of the changes that we're making this year are we're focusing on you park once and you walk to the entire day's festivities. So that means we're going to be focusing on downtown, two days in downtown Minneapolis, two days in downtown St. Paul, and one day that's going to be focused on venues that are along the Green Line, so you can use public transportation to get where you want to go. And some other changes that um, we're doing, so this year the dates are October 9th through October 16th. You don't have a calendar in front of you, but that actually goes from a Wednesday to a Wednesday. We're spanning a weekend. So we're really excited because that means that we're going to have more arts and music and food and beverage featured um, over some weekend programming. So if anybody wants to do something really cool and experiential over the weekend, we encourage you to start thinking about what that might look like now. Um, we are continuing our focus on sustainability and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Last year, we uh, laid some really good groundwork around what that might look like, and that included creating some materials for event session organizers on like, okay, here's a list of caterers who are minority owned or women owned. Um, and this year we're just gonna continue to build on that by better connecting panel and event organizers with speakers and subject matter experts who may not otherwise be represented in a lot of these events. Um, we're gonna have a bunch of cross collaborations between organizations and then also along that um, diversity, equity, inclusion, we're going to be offering mother's rooms and childcare um, for several of the days. So I don't know if there are any moms in the room, but I was a new mom last year and going to Startup Week was really overwhelming because like, if you're pumping and you're like, I don't know what, where to do this, mm -hmm. like when the events are so spread out. So we're gonna solve for that this year. And which brings us to why I think a lot of you are here. So who wants to be involved in Startup Week this year? Yay. Every hand should be up. <laughs> um, invited into the secret society. This is the secret society where all the cool kids want to hang out. So uh, there are so many ways that you can be involved in Startup Week. It do, you don't have to just plan an event. You can um, be a sponsor. If you work for a company um, who really values entrepreneurship and put, putting, setting the national stage of the Twin Cities as a player in entrepreneurship and innovation. Twin Cities helps mag magnify and amplify that message. So maybe as a, a corporate sponsor, you would want to help us do that. Um, you can plan an event, and there we have support for that. You can host an event. So that's if you, again, have a venue where maybe you don't want to have to plan the event, but you have a really cool downtown location that you want to make available to event hosts or event planners, um, let us know and we can put you in touch with people who need a venue. You can attend the week. There's so much, many cool things going on. Most of Startup Week is free, so we strongly encourage you to get out there and see all the cool things that are happening in our community. You can volunteer. Um, and then we have, a, Reed mentioned the fly-in program. So our fly-in program is a, an economic initiative where we are attracting top talent to move to the Twin Cities and we do that by advertising Startup Week in key markets where highly skilled workers live and probably are very expensive and maybe they're looking for a better quality of life. And we fly them in for Startup Week, show them all the really amazing things that are happening in the Twin Cities and convince them to move here. And we've had, like total through the fly-in program, we've had over 30 people move to the Twin Cities either directly through the program or because they heard about the Twin Cities from somebody who moved here through the fly-in program. So that's, the program's only been going on for three years. It's a huge impact. Um, so you can be a mentor through that program or you can also be a corporate sponsor. If you know anybody that wants a nudge, like maybe a niece or a nephew that you're trying to bring back or a cousin, we can, we can get them to fly back and we'll convince them to stay. <laughs> Absolutely. And as I mentioned, I was attracted here through the fly-in program. So it actually, it, it definitely works. <laughs> Um, 
And then you can host a volunteer event. So this photo here, there was a, an organization that, it's not really like startup related, but. It's free bikes for kids, right? Yes, and so they had, um, it looked like over a thousand bikes were donated and people had the opportunity to go and actually like help fix up the bikes. And then they were um, given to, you know, underrepresented kids or. It's like 20, bikes. Just from that one event? No. Oh, no they do it per year. Yeah. yeah, I think the, for Startup Week, they did a, something like a thousand bikes. It was huge. Yeah. Um, so these are all really cool. So, you know, it's not necessarily like entrepreneur. I mean, it is entrepreneurial, per, entrepreneurial in the way that you see a problem and you're fixing it. Um, but it's just a really cool way to like give back to the community and uh, break people out of like just thinking about tech. I think going back to uh, the comment on changes for this year, this is a great example of, of uh, like what is the whole week about and what makes the Twin Cities great? Like regionally or, or nationally, we actually are known for our philanthropic time spent volunteering. So an event like this not only differentiates from the thousand other panels that exist, but also like features something that we're really great at. So when we talk about adding different kind of experiential elements to the week, uh, we're really looking for like anything that comes to mind. It could be let, like, let's go run around the lakes. Um, you know, let's go to, uh, you know, some new restaurant in town. Um, you know, think, think creatively about ways that you can engage audiences outside of just, all right, here's another interesting panel of speakers. Absolutely. So, I mean, that is the beauty of Twin City Startup Week is it's all about innovation and new and breaking the mold. So there's a lot of opportunity to do that within the events. So if, um, if you are so inspired to host an event, which we hope you are, um, here is what event organizers take on. So you, all events are free to organize. You don't pay anything to put an event on. You do need to um, submit it to our calendar and I'll tell you when that the application's open. Um, it needs to be approved and we'll have like guidelines on what makes an event, what makes us approve an event. Um, once your event is approved, then you want to find a venue. It's good if you have a venue in mind when you put the application in. And then you coordinate the content. So whether that's a panel or um, you're doing a workshop, it's up to you to come up with content that people would find engaging and interesting, and then make sure people show up. So that's emailing your friends, putting it on your Twitter, uh, letting your uh, coworkers know that you're, you're doing the event. And then we can also help with that um, just by uh, virtue of it being on the Twin Cities calendar. Thousands of people will see it. And then um, we can also give you some marketing materials to help promote it. Which brings us to what assets does Twin Cities Startup Week provide? So we have a network of partners who have venues and we can definitely help you make those connections. So if you're unsure of where to host your event, especially this year since we are focusing so much on either um, a day in downtown Minneapolis or a day in downtown St. Paul, maybe you're not familiar, familiar with one of those cities, so we can help you make that connection. Um, if you need panelists or people who, who can come and speak at your event, let us know. Again, um, making sure that people who are historically underrepresented in s for speaking opportunities is a big priority for us. So we're gonna have a lot of resources thrown behind that to help you find the um, best experts and the most engaging speakers to be at your event. And marketing assets. So if you need images to put on Twitter or on Instagram, we can definitely help provide that and then give you some guidelines and uh, recommendations on how to fully amplify your messages. Um, so what makes a good Startup Week event? First of all, it's good to have practiced and that means that like running through it a couple times, being aware of your venue, and also if you have a panel, make sure that you all talk ahead of time and come up with like maybe some thematic pieces that you want to touch on, make sure that you um, just have like a conversation about talking points you want to hit as a panel. Because I've seen a lot of panels just like completely go off the rails. And um, if, you, if you have an idea of the message you want to get across, it's good to communicate that with the people on your panel ahead of time. Um, again, diverse representation. 
Um, we're really encouraging if you if you're applying or submitting a session and you have all white guys, <laughs> like 20 year old white guys on your panel, I'm going to probably give you some feedback and strongly encourage you to find other experts to bring a little bit more diversity and diversity of thought to your panel. Um, think strategically about your venue. If you are, um, think you know, we are trying to focus on downtown Minneapolis, downtown St. Paul, or along the Green Line. So if you're all the way up, in, if you're in Uptown, or if you're in Edina, or like you'll probably still get on the calendar, but just be aware that the epicenter of Startup Week is going to be focused on those geographic locations. So you may have a problem attracting people to your 45 minute session um, if it's pretty far out of those epicenters. If people are like, okay, well I have a, this panel in downtown Minneapolis, and then this other panel later in downtown Minneapolis, do I wanna drive 20 minutes to, to, for a 45 minute session? Maybe they do. Maybe you are a very, you have a very specific audience that you know that they, you, know, you already know who's coming to your session, so you don't need to be drawing from the general um, Startup Week crowd. That, that may work for you. Just keep that in mind. Um, this is, Twin City Startup Week is all about adding value and giving more information to the innovative community of Twin Cities. So this is not an opportunity to be like, selling your product, selling your services. I mean, it's great if you're a consultant who's an expert in change management. I think I saw somebody who's doing a session on that here. Um, it's great if like you wanna teach people how to be a change management professional, but it's not like how hire me to be your change management professional, right? Um, and then make sure that you're differentiating your event from others. Like think critically about why people would want to come to your session. If we have like five um, people who submit sessions on autonomous vehicles, it, it's a really popular topic, so make sure that you're like figuring out a different take on it. Like maybe it's how autonomous vehicles are actually going to save the world <laughs> versus somebody who's just talking about like why I like autonomous vehicles. So making sure that it's attracting, like there's a hook that are actually gonna attract people and make it different. Um, so we had a list of a lot of events that we see. So we see a lot of panels, we see a lot of workshops, we see a lot of networking events. Last year, some of the most interesting events were um, these guys who I think are, might be the same guys upstairs here today. They had these like drone races going on and people hadn't really seen that before. So that was really popular and that was something that was different. Um, so get creative in your event. Think about like if people are in um, sessions all day, just kind of sitting around, which unfortunately is what we're doing today. And I'm sorry we're not being more interactive. But um, think about ways of getting people out of their seats. How do you get people actually touching things? Like think of the five senses in your event. So not only is it like seeing and hearing, but there's smell and there's touch, and um, and people can also like speak from their own perspective. So that's a good way to get get more information into your session and make it interesting. And yeah, just like try to get people somehow interacting. So, and, and having a more tactile experience. So a couple examples would be like, if you are super into rapid prototyping um, as a topic, instead of hosting the session of how to like rapid prototype, get a bunch of people together and rapid prototype with mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff on the table, hot glue guns and, and, yeah, and power uh, tools. And, yeah. um, same thing with, uh, well, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Like, try to take it one step further uh, to, to get people to actually practice something than just kind of hearing it. Exactly, thanks Reed. So our timelines for um, Twin City Startup Week are we are gonna have a webinar. If you're interested in hosting an event, we will be promoting this on Twitter and also I have a sign-up sheet for anybody who wants to learn more information. Um, so we're just gonna talk about what makes a good event and how to plan it and what your resources are. That's gonna be Wednesday, May 15th. We're gonna open um, the application process for events on Monday, June 3rd. It's gonna be open for a month and a half to give people plenty of time to get their ideas in, think about what they wanna do, 
we're going to close it on Friday, July 19th. And um, during this whole process, like, feel free to email me. Feel free to um, shoot me a text. Like, if you have any questions about the best way to get involved in Startup Week, I am here to help you because the more people we get involved, the more interesting and diverse the, the week is. Um, we're going to post a schedule on Thursday, August 15th. And then Startup Week is October 9th through the 16th, which should be a lot of fun. Yeah, woo. Um, so some calls to action. I did bring a, start a sign up sheet. Let me grab it. There are so many ways to be involved in Startup Week, which we've already talked about. So if you are interested in any of these, if you're interested in hosting an event, uh, planning an event, volunteering, if you just want to like be kept up on the news of what is going on with Startup Week, you can join our newsletter. Um, and then you can also talk to us about sponsorship Sp Startup Week with over 17,000 attendees, with so many venues, with, and we really do try to like help organizers if they need some like financial assistance. We try to do that when we can. And as a nonprofit, we uh, solely rely on sponsorships and um, donations. So if you know somebody in your company who might be interested in doing that, let me know. And yeah, we really hope that we see all of you out there this year. Does anybody have any questions? Don't you keep uh, all your events from not happening on Thursday night? So That's a great question. Yeah, the, we basically get a submission, let's call it 300 events, and we'll ask what is your preferred uh, timing for the event. So by nature, some of them are self-selecting into different times, but then if everybody wants to go on that Monday, as an example, reaching out to the hosts and say, do you have any flexibility? Um, you know, hey, would you be able to, would you be willing to do Thursday instead of Monday or, or Tuesday instead of Monday and see if there's any flexibility? So there's a little bit of negotiation. Um, and then sometimes it's just, there it just happens to be a super busy day. Mm -hmm. And you know, then with the topics, we try to do a good job of making sure that there isn't something that's the exact same concept um, happening at the exact same time. Yeah. So since this is my first time, like I haven't been to one before, so what kind of even posters you have had in the history till you know, like in the past, like you know, from an individual to an individual with an idea to a bigger corporation? Like it's it's really gone all through the whole gamut. I mean, uh, Best Buy or a Target, um, you know, have been involved and have hosted very very large scale events. Mm -hmm. But also the person that you know has an idea that's working out of their garage that wants some feedback that that's on the calendar too. Um, so, you know, I would just say as you're thinking about who you want to show up, just try to, you know, ask yourself what is the goal of, the, of hosting something and then try to indicate to the audiences as they're reviewing the schedule of like, oh, that sounds like me. I, I'm, I would rather go to this 10-person prototyping shop instead of the 1,000-person Minnesota Cup finale as an example. And my follow-up question, like, you know, for, like, the big corporation, like, they, that's why they don't have any financial problems, right? But for the individual who just started off his garage, so you might have some financial problems hosting events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do they get any kind of support for that? Or? So there are, are uh, depending on how well we do a sponsorship, like, we do offer some scholarships to event hosts. That being said, um, you know, like, if you have experience in startups, it's like, what's my minimal viable product? Like, how do I get this event going? And we've seen people do things at, like, breweries, where the brewery is more than happy to have 30 people show up. And they'll uh, may even provide a microphone and some speakers. And it doesn't cost you anything. You just, like, have to come up with the content and coordinate people showing up. Um, so that's, you know, a completely free option to hosting an event. And then we've had people actually go out and find a corporate sponsor who's either willing to have it at their office as a form of sponsorship and collaboration or provide some money for them to like go and have it. So, you know, we see events that are like free at a brewery and you buy your own beer and we see them all the way up to fully catered, you know, at Target where um, they provide like breakfast, lunch and dinner. So there's a lot of options. So are, are you guys playing matchmaker then between events and venues, or if you have an event, do you get to go find your own venue? We would encourage you first to try to find your own venue. 
if you cannot find a venue or you're unsure how to do that, then come to us and we will help you. Okay. But we're a mighty team of three people at Beta who put on Twin City Startup Week, and we have tons of community support. Um, Meg Stoyer's here from Forge North, who is one of our strategic partners. So there's a lot of support in the community. Um, so you don't have a backlog of like venue people going, hey, Phil's this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, actually it does exist. There's mm -hmm. definitely kind of partnerships that we've leaned on in the past for that. So in the event that, let's say, you don't have any options for a venue, we can consult that list or those partners and say, hey, if they try this, if this is, makes the right sense for what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we will help you. Well, first of all, thank you so much for this information. This is really helpful. Even I consider myself that a little bit technology enthusiast, but I didn't know this was happening for years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, it's something that we can work on. Um, I represent a Nepali community here in the Twin Cities. We have like about 1,500 plus population, I believe, right? And uh, I would say 70% are in technology uh, industry. Wow. And um, I don't think there are more than 10% who are interested in things like that. This is a great event, right? Yeah. It's free and it's, it's great not only for your career, but you want to do something as a startup as well. Mm -hmm. um, and my question there is, obviously the lack of awareness. Not, you know, obviously in our community and maybe community like ours in Twin Cities, right? So if I have to, outside of this, and not necessarily only to um, award, you know, generate awareness for this particular event, but uh, and then beta in general, or startup community in general. Mm -hmm. If I have, um, you know, resources to talk about this and how they can be part of it, and mm -hmm. you know, just do for themselves, uh, is there a support system? If I come back to you guys and say, hey, you know, I have uh, community members here, like 30, 40, 50, and I have an event. Would you come over and talk about this? And you know, kind of encourage and motivate uh, on this particular area. Uh, I'll this is perfect, um, and uh, y however we can engage your community, uh, that's the point of the week. Um, and the reason that it's grown in the way that it has is community leaders who represent uh, the community that they're from take the lead and, and, and then invite their following into participation. So that's, I mean, I've said every year, there's probably another half dozen community leaders who find a way to use the week to say, okay, let's, you know, let's go to some of the events that already exist, but then let's host our own and, and you know, represent ourselves and find our own kind of voice in this. And um, I think that's what makes it so interesting. Um, and to answer your question, could we be available to help? Yes, we have, you know, the resources that that can help share. So some of the images and assets and. Uh, and marketing materials to tell the story. But then what's the next step? How do you engage? Then you consult with us and say, okay, what do you have in mind? Um, and and what, what do you want to do? What is your community? Uh, how do they want to get involved? And we'll lean on you to answer that question and then provide some space within the schedule to, to make it happen. Sure. Absolutely, thank you for mm -hmm. bringing that up, Dad. That's, and that is one of the reasons we're here at Mini Bar, is like how do we engage in communities that maybe haven't heard about everybody. We got five months. Five months, yeah, <laughs> to get people engaged. Uh, well, I could see that actually I organized a hackathon event last year cool. for our community, and yeah. it was pretty good turnout. And I just wanted to connect that uh, enthusiasm and interest to the larger space, like, you know. Uh, we don't have any of those on the schedule yet. Yeah, we don't have any hackathons. We'd love to have That'd be more. great. Mm -hmm. I, I think we have just a couple more minutes. Any other questions? Yeah. So um, you mentioned child care. I noticed that at this event too. Yes. That's awesome. Um, how does the child care work? That is an excellent question that we have not 100% figured out. My is child care. Your start? <laughs> oh my gosh! Let's talk. Special needs child care. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So um, we we are posed with an interesting dilemma, or not dilemma, but challenge of because Startup Week takes a place in so many places like mm -hmm. how do you have that epicenter where people can drop off their kid or find that mother's yeah. room or whatever uh -huh. um, 
So that really was one of the drivers for us saying we need to focus on one geographic location for the day. Mm -hmm. So our vision is I want to have a community hub. Mm -hmm. and I'm actually out fundraising for this right now. So if anybody knows a corporate sponsor who would be interested in having their name on the community hub where it's like in downtown Minneapolis, the community hub is some ground floor location, maybe on Nicollet Mall or something. And you can go there and hang out on a couch. You can go there. That's where the child care is. That's where the new mother's room is. Mm -hmm. um, other resources if you just need to ask somebody a question we have volunteers there so that's the vision okay. um i'll put that into it as well i let's yeah. connect after this yeah. session because i'd love to learn more and okay. definitely um one i think we have time for one more question well, sort of adding on to that, the first thing i thought of was so i used to work for the red cross okay and they have students taking the or the child care classes all the time yeah. so i was wondering if you could draw volunteers from that like real experience yeah and they're trained That's a great idea. I, I think we'll probably end up using the same service that Maria got for Minibar because they're licensed and insured. Mm -hmm. The question is like, how do you, where do, where does it happen? Yep. Um, uh, so that's and where we're at. The founder of College Nanny, but. Oh, perfect. So, well, yeah, but great. we specialize in special needs. So looking at inclusiveness and diversity is an important factor in childcare funding. Funding. Absolutely, yeah, and I love that you're bringing that up. Um, I think that's all of our time. I want to say thank you so much to everybody who came. I strongly encourage you to um, sign up. We also have a table up with all the other nonprofit organizations. So if you want to come by and see us up there during lunch, we'd be happy to see you. And a whole bunch of these t-shirts. And a lot of t-shirts and stickers. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.